Oh, there you go. There's a smile. Pat Shaughnessy, Far Yacht Design, President, right? Yeah. President, Mr. President. Um, the boats have been acquitting themselves well. We're here in Abu Dhabi just a couple minutes before you have to prep for another meeting. But I really wanted to get you to talk about this Festus Wind announcement last night. And just um, how excited you are about that and, 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 and what you see Far Yacht Design's role in the sort of next four, three or four months for those guys. Well, I think for the race, the best thing that could possibly happen is to get them back in the race at some some stage, some form, some way. And obviously, as a sponsor, it gives them a vehicle to tell a story along the way so they, they have an opportunity for a large return. So you can see a number of benefits for everybody along the way. And um, for us, obviously, we want to help any of the partners get whatever they need to out of the thing. And, and when we see a broken boat, it's like having a, you know, a child that's in it. A little bit of a bad situation so for us we look at it as an opportunity to to try to fix that thing and get it back you know in, in a good way and and uh how much can be fixed and how much needs to be replaced still has a you know there's a lot of determining to do in, in that but um and is that is that more the structures guys with with input from you or is that just a strictly you know sort of based on the actual ndt stuff that they're doing or what well i think the initial ndt work will show you what's been damaged and what hasn't been damaged and then after that, you'll need to create a strategy for how to potentially use those undamaged parts. And it's not as trivial as it's undamaged, it can be reused right. because you need a total methodology to arrive at a, a boat that can be a one design again and, and can be you know, viewed as a competitive boat. Right. So that, that's, that's our goal, I think, is to form that strategy and then do the engineering work to complete it and to help James Dad make sure it's a one design boat. Got it. And are there many concerns from the other skippers that it's uh, that that it could be too different? Um, well, I think the one design rule will do its job of, of ensuring that it is a one design. That isn't the same as um, is it the same as it was before? Right. That, that's obviously the one design rule is is largely in place to measure geometries and, and weights, um, and so it's not equipped to to measure a difference in stiffness or right. a difference. So even if we use the same materials, if we're um, splicing new components to old components or whatever, there are going to be some differences. And and the other teams, uh, I think rightly so, should be you know concerned about that. And and it doesn't take much of a crystal ball to see a you know scenario where Vestas goes and gets ahead of some people and changes a little bit the results later on. So it it is a good thing to worry about. But I think. Um, that, that's sort of in the general fairness of, of the race. Any time a boat would be uh, suffer some sort of um, whatever, it, it has an opportunity to rejoin, and that causes some havoc in the results, and that's ultimately what, as fans, we want to see out of it. I think, yeah, so. definitely, definitely. Um, you know, I think the, the resounding chorus from around the world from people who sail boats offshore was obviously, and from the team, was, Jesus Christ, these boats are tough. Uh, I, I can't think of another... Ocean, right? Modern ocean racers that could have could have handled what what the the TVW handled on that reef. Does that surprise you guys, or or did you know all along these boats were as strong as anything that's ever been built for this kind of kind of racing? No, well, the the boats in general, even the the Volvo Open Seventies, they're um, they're in particular their grounding criteria are, are, are quite stringent. Um, and so that combined with the fact you have a Canton keel boat that grounds first in its dagger board and sort of dissipates some energy in, in that combined, I think, with the shape of the reef, you know, that, that was quite a, a fortunate set of circumstances, um, made it look as good as it could look, I think. The boats are incredibly robust. I, you know, I've said a couple of times before, I don't think there are any boats that have had the kind of engineering scrutiny or, or really difficult criteria laid over the design and build process that these have so I don't think it's surprising that they are really robust but right. I think that that particular incident went about as well as it could have gone you know all right well I'll let you get back to your prep work for another thing you've got to do we're in Bicey's trailer waiting to do a little boatyard video and and there you have it thanks Pat much appreciated Michael.